Back with us now is Bobby Katz Hinden. She was hiding with her three-year-old grandson during yesterday's shooting. Bobby, sorry about that technical glitch. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Allison. Thanks, Bobby. I appreciate you sticking with us. So tell us what happened when you heard the gunshots. What did you do? Well, I had arrived early at the parade, which I knew I had to do. I've been coming to these parades for 30 years. And when I got there, actually, my spot was taken. So I went across the street to um, set up. And my three-year-old grandson and my two adult children were with me. We were watching the mayor walk by and the ponies and the marching band. And then suddenly, we heard this loud, loud pops. They weren't even pops. I don't even know what to call them. Um, and then a pause. And we looked at each other and, like, had no clue what that could be. And people started screaming. I looked forward and I saw a couple of people on the ground. And we stood up and grabbed my three-year-old grandson and ran down the street and crouched in the doorway of a store that was closed with about 10 other people. And I knew the whole time that this was not a safe place to be. We were completely exposed, but I had no idea where the gunshot was coming from. We stayed there a while. Some of the kids standing with us were crying, and people were just looking at each other in horror. And my little grandson was just plastered up against the wall behind us. Um, we waited a while until it was quiet. And I looked at my daughter, and I said, we can't stay here. We're still like out in the open. So we decided to um, walk. I live two blocks away, it's just literally two blocks away. We decided to make our way home. And as we made it through the plaza across the street, I saw bloodied bodies. And all I wanted to do was protect my three-year-old grandson from seeing that, and we did. We shielded him. We made our way very quickly home, um, still just in incredible disbelief. And, um, I live on a first floor of a condo with windows, and we immediately closed the blinds and stayed sheltered. Um, and Bobby, we were there all day. I mean, this sounds, it sounds terrifying. I'm so sorry that you had to experience all that and see all of that. Has your three-year-old grandson said anything about everything that happened yesterday? You know, I think we were fairly fortunate. Um, you know, his main goal in coming to the parade was to get some candy. And later on, he said to us, where's my candy? Um, and we were able to provide. But I do think he was very aware that something was off. Um, we were all on our phones all day. And he kept saying, why is everybody on their phones? And when his mama stepped out a little bit to see what was happening, he immediately said, mama, come back. And so. Um, it remains to be seen. You know, trauma happens so quickly with little ones, and we have to pay attention to what he says and what he does. But yeah. I'm hopeful that he'll get past this. Yeah, but I, I take your point that, that even if he doesn't know what's different, he knows that there's anxiety about something. You know, he wants his mother close to him, even if he can't define it. And Bobby, I understand that you run a child care center and you work with toddlers and young kids. And so are you going to talk to them I about do. it? I mean, what's, what's the way to talk about this with kids? Absolutely. We had a team meeting this morning with a mental health professional where everybody was able to share their feelings and their own experiences about the day. And then we will reach out to all of the families we work with and make sure that they get, are getting the support they need. There is really an outpouring of support in this community, which is characteristic of this community. And we will make sure everybody gets what they need, whether it's the counseling or the food or whatever services they need right now. And Bobby, are you ever going to take your grandson to a parade again? That's a really good question. I'd like to think that my life can go on. I do want to say, Allison, that this morning when I told my kids, my adult kids, that I was going to join you, they were shocked that I said yes. And um, they said, Mom, just tell your story. Don't be political. And I said, OK, but I do have to share with you that 
I'm done. I don't want people's prayers. I don't want their sympathy. We have to do something about this. It, this is craziness. The grief that goes on in communities over this all across our country, it's got to change and people have to get up and make something happen. Bobby, you're not alone in your thoughts. I mean, I sometimes get, you know, the emails from people who say it's too soon to talk about this. We, we talk about it, unfortunately, regrettably, every week. It's not too soon. We have to figure out some solution Absolutely. and way to do it differently. But, Bobby, thanks. I really appreciate it. I know that this is a really traumatic time for your family. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. You're welcome. You're welcome, Allison.